So, text node, text node. Let's go into our uh, favorites window. Open that guy up. Window, favorites. And we can see the favorites that I've happened to say, the directories where those are at. So we go back into chapter two, geometry primitives, and then all the way down to text dot x3d. I'll open that up a little bit. And here we are. We see that uh, just by inspecting this, we can see that, oh gee, this is a lot like our hello world scene that we first discovered. So there is uh, uh, a string and there is a corresponding appearance. And if we view this guy, should get it. Okay, now let me uh, point out a bug or two and some idiosyncrasies. We have uh, here, when I go to the default viewpoint on that, notice how the hello X3D is cut off. This is a bug in XJ3D viewer in that their vertical alignment is misset. And so I went over here into the XJ3D viewer pane. In fact, I'll open it up here. We'll undock it or go full screen, I just double clicked on the top bar to do that. And then I'm clicking here on the pan button in the lower left hand corner, pan. And that, that's like uh, panning a camera, left, right, up, down, where you can see different parts of a scene. So that changes our mouse, how it interacts. You can see it also changes the mouse icon in the center of the screen to be a four-way arrow. So now when I click and drag downwards, it's not like we were before where we were angling the camera up and down to examine something in the middle. Instead, it's panning straight up, straight down, left, right, so that anything that's in the middle just seems to move relative to the camera and not around it or under it. Okay, so that's a little bit about pan, and we can see it straight on here. Further, if we go to Alt-Shift-W wireframe, we can see that, yes, indeed, there are a lot of uh, polygons in there. How many? Well, as with other primitives, we don't get to vote. That's up to the browsers. And uh, we'll learn a little more about that because I think you can see that how many polygons and precisely how they're put together, we call that fonts. That's, that's the font that's in here. And we, we only have a couple of fonts in X3D that are default. Some browsers have uh, gone the extra mile and put in entire families of fonts and made those available to you. So that's uh, both good and bad, as we will soon see. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's our guy. So let's look at this thing. We'll go into the text node and we'll edit it. And we'll see that it only has a couple of fields in here. It has the string. This is what's being rendered. The length of the string, which obviously is uh, optional. And the maximum extent. And then finally, good old solid, whether it's uh, double-sided or not. Let's test out the solid field just to make sure we're doing, that's working. I'm gonna click back on the examine mode to rotate, and we'll rotate this guy around. Sure enough, it disappeared. Let's go back into the scene. You can see that there's no solid listed here under the node, meaning it uses the default. Let's go back then and edit it. Uh, reselect the node is important. Edit it. And now we'll deselect solid, in other words, solid equals false, which is the safer entry. And now when we re-render, and re-rotate, and I 
think we've seen this bug before. This looks like another bug in XJ3D where it's not paying attention to the solid field. Okay, so who's our uh, scribe today? Thank you, Chris. Uh, please put on there to uh, confirm that the bugs are entered in the XJ3D bug tracker for both uh, uh, text vertical alignment and solid false two-sided polygons. Okay, now we might well suspect here, well, maybe it's not the browser, maybe it's us, maybe it's our scene. So how else would we test this? Well, the first and best way is uh, let's check the XML. First we'll do a well-formed check, it says yes, our scene's okay. Then we'll do a validation check, and it will look in and say, okay, it meets all the X3D rules for what's a good scene in the XML encoding. So now what we can do next is let's start looking at it in some of the other browsers. So first I'll push it to my web browser where whichever plugin I happen to have installed, which will get launched, we'll also send it to uh, one or two others, but let's look. Okay, so here's first, uh, we can see from the little commercial stuff, the BS Contact browser, and yes, it did come up center of the screen, which is where we would have expected. And now if I rotate it, and they have a separate bug where they don't come up in examine mode first to enable rotation. I have to change that myself. And then it gets balky when I do that. Well, goodness, maybe I can't even flip it around. another uh, bug parade day here. Okay, fine. If contact doesn't want to play, we'll just move on to the next one. Uh, instant reality is the next one I have installed. Now this time it's not going into the browser. It's going directly to the X3D viewing application and it's going to launch that. Here's contact finally back. I flipped it. I guess it just had to think about it for a while, but we can see that, okay, contact's working all right with hello world text in solid mode. Let's see if we've got instant reality now. Uh, we saw it for a second there. Not turning up. Okay, on to the next. You seen externally in Octaga. A bunch of guys in Norway, they have an excellent browser. We'll also launch it in uh, uh, Vivity. And if you want, you can also launch it in an external XJ3D viewer. We let you uh, do that in case uh, you want two different versions. And to remember, to give you a reminder of how do we get these installed on our machine, you go to see Tools, Options, Miscellaneous, X3D Edit. So it does give you an option to add yet another if there's one you like. So let's go to Tools, Options, Miscellaneous, X3D Edit. As with uh, just about everything in this course, uh, you can find these slides in the notes. The particular slides for how to configure your browser are back in uh, chapter zero so-called uh, how to get started. Okay, so what I've done is go to the download page for each one of these guys and install them locally on the machine. You can see Free World is not installed because uh, it's only on Mac and Linux currently. And our other is, well, I don't have any other browsers. We've got everyone here that we know of to support. Okay, so Instant player didn't seem to work so well, but this is where you would get it from. And I'm not sure why that didn't launch. Okay, so I guess we'll have to uh, take our word for it that uh, yes, this is properly centered. 
because it has survived scrutiny under all these browsers to get into our scene archive. And uh, it did work under contact, so it would seem my launching is not working too well. Has anybody else tried the launching in external browsers? How's it working for you, Shelby? Just IE. It's right, and it pops up in your Explorer. And did you actually check this scene? I just did it in one area. So okay, and it looked good? Yes. So? It was solid, uh, as expected. Very good. Okay. So, what's next? I'm going to back up the change we made, since this is the, ma the master version. And let's look at this uh, string a little bit more. The string that gets displayed. And this one's pretty curious, because if I get the right one here, we edit that element. And we see that this is literally two strings. We've got hello quoted and x3d quoted. And it's the act of putting those in quote marks, double quotes for each, that instead of showing double quotes in the line, it breaks it into separate strings. And that's what lets you get multiple lines, one, two, three, four, however many you do. So let's add another one and see if that works. Enter. Refresh. I guess this is a bug with XJ3D. It's not refreshing the text node. Or we've created some other problem. I'll put it out in the uh, other browser again. So there it is, the new text that we did. Okay, so let's go to the slides now and see what it says about that. So we're on slide 24. And this confirms what we've been looking at, that uh, the text node produces hopefully readable text. And it's not 3D text, really. It's flat. It's flat text. We saw that there was no depth to these guys. The string field is an array. It's an array of quoted strings. And it's those quotes, the double quotes on either side, that determines which gets onto what line. OK, then we have a length field that can uh, give you the length in uh, meters, length in units, for each line. And we can, uh, uh, therefore, shrink or stretch the line if you don't like how wide they are. And then max extent is, is something that would apply to all the lines at once. You would use max extent if you were trying to put, put some uh, text in a very tight or maybe a very constrained corner and you wanted to make sure that however the browser rendered its text was not too big. So that if, say you had a sign over a door or in between two buildings about go in here, then uh, you could make sure that it fit in the space and it wasn't overlapping on either side. Okay, and then um, the best news about length and max extent is we almost never have to use them. It's really just a very specialty formatting lineup capability. So we really don't bother that much. Let's check our, our notes on this, and sure enough, it didn't say that. So let's add that. Um, say, uh, commonly, we don't have to worry about the length and max extent fields. They are computed automatically 
and internally by the X3D viewer. So defining values for these two fields. is a specialty technique when needed for very precise offering. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. How are we on uh, editing sneezes, Jeff? Do they rise to the level of uh, editable? They're entertaining, so I don't know if I really want to <laughs> Entertainment value trumps all, okay. Uh, and then there's actually an interest, very interesting reference on this, uh, on the use of text uh, that we'll add, and that's uh, uh, information uh, visualization In virtual environments, that's a dissertation, uh, approximate title. I'll make sure that the uh, minutes are corrected. Uh, Chris, please note, minute that, that uh, confirm the reference uh, on the uh, text slide notes uh, by uh, Nick Paulus at uh, Virginia Tech. Okay, and, and what he does is he looks very closely in that thesis, excuse me, in that dissertation, shows a bunch of different examples and projects where they're annotating information in the 3D scene and are trying to maximize the communications capability of it. And, and that can get very cluttered. He does uh, some molecular examples, some medical examples, uh, where you want to have lots of display and, it, and lots of information in your display, but you don't want to have so much text that it becomes unreadable or it clutters up how things work. And so as it turns out, there's some uh, counterintuitive, surprising trade-offs that get made. He went a long way towards uh, uh, quantifying that by doing user studies where they would build a handful of uh, very busy, information-rich scenes. Uh, uh, in fact, I think that's his title, information-rich uh, virtual environments. And see if they were practically usable by people trying to interact with the scene, understand what was going on, manipulate it, etc. Okay, what else can we say here about text? We have uh, a reference here to the billboard node. And the billboard node is something that's in our next chapter. Uh, billboard is a node that's a grouping node. It collects other nodes together. And what it does is it takes whatever's underneath that billboard grouping node and it will rotate it to always face the user. Okay, so what we'll see in the next chapter is examples of text that has a billboard over it. So as the user navigates through the scene, we get to always have the text facing them instead of navigating through the scene and having the text getting harder and harder to read or perhaps invisible or backwards if you're on the side or behind. Okay, here is our uh, interface. On our wish list with the interface is, uh, this is a pretty crude multi-field string ed editor here, MF string editor. So we'll probably be dressing this up uh, maybe during, this, during the, this course so that each string is on a separate line and you don't have to put in uh, your own uh, quote marks. Okay, if we go to the tooltips page, 
then we actually get some uh, interesting examples here. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is zoom in on the tooltips to make this a little more readable. Okay, and a good question would be, how do you escape these things? How do you put in quotes inside a quote? All right, so here's an example of how you would do this, at least in the Vermal virtual reality modeling language, classic Vermal encoding, you would put a backslash before it. And if you want to uh, put in other special characters, you use different codes. So let's actually start a new slide on this because we do have this pretty well described in the book. It gives you some examples on this. But let's, uh, let's add a slide with some examples and then we'll put it in uh, our scene. So uh, And these will just be rough for now, and, and we'll dress them up later. Okay, now if you want a full write-up of this, we do have a slide or two in chapter one, but we'll just give some examples right here. We've skipped chapter one and that's why it's uh, not in here right now. So the uh, XML shorthand, also known as the character entity, for the quote mark is ampersand QUOT. Okay, and I'll just bullet these because we'll have a couple of them. Similarly, the uh, single quote mark is ampersand APOS, and the ampersand character itself is percent AMP semicolon. Okay, and the way this works is uh, you can now insert them inside a string. So, so the suggested form on this stuff, if I can get out of it here, would be uh, string equals, and then since it's an XML attribute, we have to quote it either using single or double quotes. We get our choice. That's in the XML rules. So what we'll do is we'll start with uh, uh, single quotes as the outer delimiter. And that That will uh, solve a multitude of sins. And then we can have our string be something like single quote, hello from backslash ampersand QUOT. Semicolon. Monterey. And then similarly, backslash, ampersand, QUOT, semicolon, and then quote to finish out that string. Let's test this out. Let's see if this works.
Okay, so I'm copying that. I'm putting it into our text node. And that uh, slide editor I was using, OpenOffice, looks like it used a funky version of the double quote mark, so I'm replacing those. You know, there's, a, there's the double quote mark, but there's also the left and the right facing ones that some word processors and some editing tools. So I'm getting rid of those bad boys. Just the straight up, straight up and down. And then I wanted Monterey in there quoted. Let's, why don't we make it Monterey, comma, the language capital of the world. Put that in quotes. And let's see what we get. First we'll check just the plain text form, see what came out here. And sure enough it looks like it survived pretty much what we wanted. Notice how it got rid of the double quotes that we had because it said, oh, you don't need those. You just did one line. So let's try this. Let's restart our viewer and see what we get. Pull it back up. Okay, so XJ3D is just not cooperating at all today. So I'm going to lean on contact out here, we'll reload. And we can see something came out, but certainly not what we expected. So let's re-inspect this. Hello from Monterey. Let's make that two lines. We'll put in our double quotes again. Save, reload. Okay, this looks a little better. I'll zoom out, I hope. Let's change our navigation back. With that nav shift in contact really sends it off into uh, a rest period. I think we could call that a bug. Chris, please add that. There's two actually. One is that contact does not default to examine mode. And the second bug is that when you shift navigation modes, contact takes an excessively long time to switch. And even with that long and boring statement, we're still standing here watching the hourglass, which, which I suppose is supposed to mean something. It's, it just means I'm resting, I guess. Okay, finally we got something. Here it comes back. And looky there. Hello from Monterey, language capital of the world. And we got our quotes inside our quotes. Okay, so it's a bit convoluted. Take some time. Take a screen snapshot of this to make sure we have proof positive. So that depends on your uh, on your operating system how you take uh, pictures. get mine up. I'm going to drop it into Visio and I'm going to take a picture and we'll add that to the notes for this slide set. So we'll get into landscape mode, page setup, 
transcape y k paste okay there it is so that will make a nice figure later on so back into x3d edit now let's sum up some of the things that we just did this line right here shows us how to have double quotes for two lines two lines of text and it shows us how to put a quote mark itself into the text and that's by doing an ampersand quote and putting a backslash in front of it. Okay, so there's definitely some uh, sleight of hand going on here. It's not easy. That's a lot of tedious uh, charactermanship, tedious obfuscation practically that we have to fight our way through, but it nevertheless works. Bringing us full circle to won't it be nice when we give you a extra support here in the text node for entering those things. So you can just type what you want on each line. You can type quotes or apostrophes with reckless abandon, just having it look like what you want. And then when we save out the, the, the data that you have, it'll look, uh, it'll be in the right encoding in the file. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Uh, how, how important would you guys rate this feature? Would this be a valuable feature to have? Yes, okay, so we'll put that on our uh, Pry1 list. Uh, Chris, please note that then, that getting a multi-field string array editing support should be a priority one feature. Okay, given that, we can put any kind of text in there. And although I don't have an example, we can also put internationalized text in there. And perhaps we should. So why don't we put that on the wish list too, Chris? Let's put an internationalized text. Maybe we should have hello from Monterey. In multiple languages and multiple text notes. Maybe that'll be a, um, a nice example. Now, uh, there's actually some more trickiness here that I guess I should mention. Let's capture that guy. And here's the one we actually put in. String equals hello from Monterey. I'll break it onto a new line. Put some spaces in between so we can see the difference. And then let's zoom this guy up. Just the font, this will be a little more readable. Okay, and we'll zoom it up now. Okay, is that readable even in the back row right now? That highlighted line? Uh, rather than backlighting it, I'll make it uh, dark red, let's say. Okay, now remember how I went through all of the pain and agony of doing ampersand quote? Because that was the equivalent character, the character entity? Well, look what happened in the tool. It changed it back for us to simply a double quote character, because they are equivalent. So the tool said, well, you know, thank you for doing that, but you didn't quite have to. Reason why? Because we use single quotes as the outer delimiter. And so we can use double quotes as many times as we want in here. So these double quotes, let's say the green 
double quotes. We'll change the color on those guys. The green double quotes are what's needed for the MF string, the different string array. What's our next color here? How about uh, turquoise? The turquoise backslash double quote is what puts it into the scene and the outermost is for the XML, the red. Well, uh, there's no point in being satisfied with a perfectly good job, right? So let's, let's pile on a little harder here. Let's see what else we could do. Well, we haven't put an apostrophe in here. If we tried to put an apostrophe in, if we just put apostrophe S like that, low from Monterey, comma, California's possessive, language capital of the world. Okay, so this is our, our next questionable character, right? That apostrophe. Now, if you were an XML reader, you would get about that far from the first one to the second one and say, okay, that's your XML value, got it. And then as soon as it got to that, it would say, what's this? I don't expect any of that. I'm going to now stop and declare that you are invalid. Let's try that. Okay, and I just pasted that in, so here we are. Hello from Monterey, California's apostrophe quote, quote, hmm, it's barking at us. We've got a little hint here, this red under there says, I'm confused, I've got an error, there's something wrong, let's test it. Is it well-formed XML? Check. No, no, we failed the test here. It's no longer well-formed XML because it said, as soon as you gave me that ending apostrophe here, I'm looking for something else besides more text. I'm looking for another attribute or another, another uh, tag. Okay, and let's see, why doesn't this want to stay up? Output, output, output here, meet up there. Time to pick my new favorite key, reset windows, view output, window output output, here we go, and we'll get rid of this stuff, stretch this out since we have such a long line, and now we can see it all side by side. So it flags it for us here. Where is the error localized to? Well, it was close. It was off by two characters, but it was very, it told us where did it think the error was found because it assumed that the goodness was here. Okay, and it told us what line, line 20. If we click on there, on the error, notice how it very conveniently takes us right to the error, to the fault. It puts, highlights it in red and say, fix me. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, from the slide, from our reading in the book, we see that the equivalence character for the apostrophe character, also known as the escape character, or the character entity, to use XML jargon, XML parlance, it's ampersand apostrophe. So let's stick that in. Instead of a simple apostrophe, we'll do ampersand apostrophe. Is that very pretty? No, but will it work? Well, 
it just passed XML validation. Click again, it just passed X3D validation. Stronger set of checks. And let's try to render it again. So save, go out to our browser that's working today, reload, zoom out. Sure enough, there we have an apostrophe S at the end of California. And we have double quoted apostrophes at the end. Okay, so we can get there from here. It is doable. can be tricky. Once you get the rules, it's not so bad. There's a more detailed explanation in the text. And maybe some fine day we'll have another fancy schmancy line editor that will do all of this for you, or a good part of it for you, automatically. We can see that it, it was smart enough to tell us, you know what, uh, if you use an ampersand quote mark, you don't have to anymore. It'll, I'll fix that for you and make it cleaner. Okay. Nevertheless, you might see it if it goes through another XML editor. Because those characters are equivalent, other browsers, other XML authoring tools have their choice. They can flip the single quote and the double quote as they wish. So if we put double quotes on them outside from the XML perspective, then we'd have to use the ampersand quote everywhere on the inside. Okay, and that's why we picked the form we do in X3D Edit. Okay, for those of you who might decide that, well, I do need to write a bunch of foreign text and make that work, we could go outside of X3D now and let me pull up, uh, let me pull up one of our tool tips. And in fact, we'll do that not inside a browser, but let's pull it up inside a text editor. And so uh, I'll find one of those guys. And I just happen to know where to look on my system. So if you poke around enough, you'll find it yourself uh, installed as part of X3D Edit if you wanted to go there. Well, let's go to uh, French. And I'm just going to drag that file in, that XML file, into X3D Edit. And if we go down, we can see in here, okay, here's the tool tips for box. You can see a whole bunch of these special character entities all over the place, anywhere there's a character entity. If we look at the tooltips for French out in a, in a web browser, see how they turn up. We'll go to the resources page, authoring support, scroll down a little, there's tooltips, French, box. Okay, so we see, sure enough, there are some, what we would call here in the United States anyway, special characters vowels with accents, a few other things, C with a sedia, so forth. So, okay, so they're clean right here. They've been escaped under the hood in the XML file. Once again, these are equivalence definitions, so either one's legal. So if you're uh, interested in doing tooltips or if you're simply going to put some internationalized text in your scene that says click here or click at AEC or something like that. Uh, a good way to do that is not worry about any of these characters, but simply get somebody with the international keyboard for what they want to just type it in. And those characters can be cut and pasted, dropped in, and then let one of the XML tools do the equivalence characters and you don't have to worry about it. So we definitely don't ask somebody doing tooltips to insert character codes for every darn special character, every non-ASCII character. They can simply 
cut and paste. Uh, for those of you who go on to later courses with us or on your own work, uh, gee, here would be a neat project. Read the XML, push it online to an auto translator, pull the text back and drop it right in. One of the powerful features of XML is that the more you do, the more you do. It gets easier and easier to get all of these capabilities. Okay, so that finishes up the second chapter on the text node. Let's see what references we have left in the slide set. We're at the end of the chapter and we should see that there's a couple extra resources in here that we can talk to. Come on, little puppy. Okay. Uh, oh, font style. We missed that. So we need to do the font style node. This is actually pretty simple. The font style node lets you do size, family, layout, and directions. So do we have enough time today? Can we knock this out? I guess we don't, because uh, John Fowley's got a class. So let's uh, call it a day, and we'll pick up with font style on the next section. All right, thanks.